Namaste. So now let's continue with the next verses of Mahishasura Mardini Stotram. Suravara Varshini, Durdhara Darshini, Durmukha Marshini, Harsharate, Tribhuvana Poshini, Shankara Toshini, Kilbisha Moshini, Gosharate, Danujani Roshini, Diti Sutta Roshini, Durmada Soshini, Sindhu Sute, Jaya Jaya He Mahisha Sura Mardini, Ramya Kapardini Shaila Sute. Salutations to you, O Divine Mother, I invoke you, who showers boons on the Devas, who overpowered demon Durdhara, literally unrestrainable, and Dur demon Durmukha, literally foul mouthed, and finally slayed him, and who delights in her own bliss who sustains and nourishes the three worlds, who delights Lord Shankara by removing the sins, the sinful demons, by indulging in the tumult of battle, who quells the wrath of the Dhanavas, the sons of Danu, and is angry with the Daityas, the sons of Diti, who dries up the foolish pride of the demons, and who is the daughter of the ocean as Lakshmi Devi. Victory to you, victory to you. I take refuge in your auspicious feet, O destroyer of the demon Mahishasura, who shines with beautiful locks of hair, the daughter of the mountain. So why is the goddess against the demons? Isn't she the mother of all? Doesn't she care for them? And the answer is yes, she does care for them. That's why she kills them, because they're sinful. They go against the plan of the Supreme. They try to uproot the governing structure of the universe of the demigods. And they always perform many atrocities against the devotees who are engaged in self-realization because they want to be worshiped themselves. So we see in this world, there are actually many demoniac people. They want power, but not to serve, not to help, but only to enjoy for their own selves, like that. So who are some of these demons? Durdhara means unrestrainable. Well, what is unrestrainable? Lust. So she kills lust, and then she kills Durmukha, means bad-faced or bad-mouthed. Uh, in other words, he's saying many insulting things and like that. Well, if there's anything that mother doesn't like, it's someone with a foul tongue. So she always makes sure to chastise them. Why? For their own good. Because in the future, by accepting her chastisement, they can have a more auspicious birth where they won't be demons, where they'll actually get involved in the process of religion. And some more demons are mentioned. The Dhanavas. Dhanavas are the sons of Danu. And the Daityas, the sons of Diti. Sanskrit often forms possessives by lengthening the first vowel, especially of a proper name. So the Dhanavas are the sons of Danu, and the Daichas are the sons of Diti. Because Diti conceived at an inauspicious time, her sons became demons. And of course, this is going on all over the world. People are having sex while intoxicated, 
and late at night at inauspicious times. They don't check the astrology. Huh? They don't even know anything about astrology. <laughs> So they go on creating children at inauspicious times whose nature is demoniac and who cause them nothing but trouble and grief. So this is because of ignorance of the Vedic platform, the Vedic way of life. Now, the whole world is covered by ignorance because of these demoniac people assuming positions of power in the governments. And the pious kings are nowhere to be seen. This is Kali Yuga. This is one of the symptoms of Kali Yuga. False forms of religion. For example, yoga and tantra are being sold in the marketplace as just a physical exercise form or just a sexual practice without any of the meaning behind it. And of course, this is not right. This is not correct and it leads to the downfall of everyone concerned. So this commercialism is what ruins spiritual life. But this is another aspect of the demon's culture, to measure everything by money instead of by spiritual advancement. So the Vedic culture values everything by the spiritual advancement that it engenders. So in this way, the whole society is oriented towards spiritual life because anyone who's been in business knows that whatever you measure is what you get. Huh? People used to measure their performance in life, their values in life by spiritual advancement. But now it's only about money. So this is demoniac and you're gonna see she's going to take care of this. <laughs> so let's look at the next verse. Ai jagadamba madamba kadamba vana priya vasini hasarate shikari shiro mani tunga himalaya shringa nijalaya madjagate madu madure madu kaita baganjini kaita babhanjini rasarate jaya jaya he mahishasura mardini ramya kapardini shaila sute Salutations to you, O Divine Mother. I invoke you, who are the mother of the universe, who is my own mother, who likes to live in the forest of kadamba trees and delights in laughter and mirth, who abides in the middle of the crest jewel of the peaks of the lofty Himalayas, who is as sweet as honey, who subdued the pride of the demons Madhu and Kaitaba and destroyed them, indulging in the din and uproar of the great battle. Victory to you, victory to you. I take refuge in your auspicious feet, O destroyer of the demon Mahishasura, who shines with beautiful locks of hair, the daughter of the mountain. So we spoke a little bit last time about the actual nature of the goddess, that she is consciousness. She doesn't just represent consciousness in a kind of symbolic way, but she actually is consciousness. She is the force of consciousness from which the whole universe has sprung. We experience this every single day. When we wake up in the morning, the whole world comes into being before us. Why? Because our consciousness has changed from sleep to waking from Swapna to Jagrat. And when we're asleep, we experience another world, a different world, where the rules are different. Everything is different. A different body, a different world, different people, people that we don't even know, huh? in our dreams. So when consciousness changes, the world also changes. And when we go into deep sleep, the world disappears completely. We're conscious but there's nothing to be conscious of. And this is actually a very wonderful state. We need it so much that if people are deprived of deep sleep, they go crazy very quickly. So she is the consciousness that pervades everything and specifically that causes the existence of the world. 
Aishatakanda Vikandita Runda Vitundita Shunda Gajadhipate Ripu Gajaganda Vidarana Chanda Parakrama Shunda Mrigadhipate Nija Buja Danda Nipatita Kanda Vipatita Munda Patadipate Jai Jaya He Mahishasura Mardini Ramya Kapardini Shaila Sute. Salutations to you, O Divine Mother. I invoke you, who are the conqueror of the enemy's elephants, who cut off their trunks and heads and the headless bodies into a hundred pieces, whose lion fiercely tears asunder the faces of the powerful elephants of the enemies, who felled the heads of the demons, Chanda and Munda, with the weapons in her arms, and who conquered the enemy warriors. Victory to you, victory to you. I take refuge in your auspicious feet, O destroyer of the demon Mahishasura, who shines with beautiful locks of hair, the daughter of the mountain. Well, some people might say, wow, this sounds really violent. You know? Does she really enjoy violence like that? Well, in Vedas, there is no prohibition against violence for the right cause. And that cause is the protection of the universe and especially protection of the Vedic teachings of spiritual life, which have no equal anywhere in the world. Anyone who finds fault with the Vedic teachings certainly has not studied them sufficiently and especially has not studied them in comparison with other religious paths because uh, they are biased they're not seeing the reality that the Vedic knowledge is innately superior to all other forms of spirituality. So that's why it's such an offensive thing to change the teachings and create bogus versions of yoga and tantra and like that. This is very, very sinful and dangerous for the whole world. Buddha mentioned that it's not so dangerous to have a wrong teaching because people will find out eventually when they try to apply it and don't get any result and they'll drop it. But what is dangerous is a counterfeit teaching, something that has the same name and superficially appears to be the same thing, but actually is completely different. So this is what's going on in the world today. And the metaphorical meaning of the elephants are offenses. Huh? I mean, an elephant is a very powerful beast. And when an elephant becomes angry or goes crazy, sometimes in military use, they give elephants intoxicating liquors. And when this happens, sometimes the elephants can go crazy and just destroy everything in their path. Huh? And the idea is to use this as a weapon of war. But elephants can be very offensive. In fact, the biggest offenses in spiritual life are called elephant offenses. This is anything to do with offending the guru, especially to try to harm the, the guru physically. This is considered the elephant offense. It's the greatest offense. It's the unforgivable offense that will send a person to a very bad destination in the next life. So she kills all these offenses and she kills the people who cling to them and try to use them to make their way through life in an offensive manner. Why, how can we say this? How, how can we say that consciousness kills these elephants of offenses? Well, if you observe yourself when you're angry, you're not conscious. Your consciousness has become covered by your wrath and your attachment to whatever it is you're angry about. The only way to really overcome anger is to be aware, to be mindful, to take a deep breath and look at the actual situation that, that this person isn't really doing anything bad or wrong just that they're doing something that I'm attached to. And so I don't like it. 
So you might say, well, aren't you being like that when you criticize people who don't follow the Vedas or who follow the Vedas in a way that you don't like? And the answer is no, because we're not the least bit angry. <laughs> and that's the same thing with mother. She's not the least bit angry because nothing that these demons do can affect her personally. She's in the absolute position. She's the Saguna Brahman. Nothing can hurt her. So she really has no stake in any of the things that the demons do. But because they hurt the other people in the world, she arranges to destroy them. For example, now we're experiencing tremendous uh, climate change. And that climate change is going to pretty much destroy the technical situation and the technological civilization on planet Earth. Uh, just give it another 50 years or so. They've only begun to see the effects of the climate change. This is Mother Nature striking back against the people who are polluting the world. So that's the way she works. See, her lion, <laughs> her lion is the forces of nature. Nobody can win against the forces of nature, just like nobody can win a fight against a lion, even an elephant. Aung Tatsa, Aung Shakti Aung. <laughs>